Hello, I'm Pam Blackmer, dietitian at Jocelyn Diabetes Center. Today we're going to talk about carbohydrate counting. Carbohydrate counting is a method to use to help manage blood sugar levels. With type 1 diabetes, you must match carbohydrate intake and mealtime insulin dose, basically doing what the pancreas would do if you did not have diabetes. Remember that bolus insulin helps control high blood sugars caused by a meal or a snack. You will need to know the amount of carbohydrate in food. This will determine how much insulin you take. Food contains carbohydrate, protein, and fat. These provide calories for energy and nutrients to keep your body healthy. Carbohydrate breaks down to glucose, which is another word for sugar. It has the largest impact on blood sugar level. Protein and fat have little effect on blood sugar. Carbohydrates are starches or sugars. Carbohydrates will raise your blood sugar and require mealtime insulin for blood sugar control. Examples of carbohydrates are starchy foods such as bread, crackers, pasta, grains, rice, potatoes, cereals, pretzels, popcorn, and pizza, and they require bolus insulin. Starchy vegetables are also carbohydrates such as corn, kidney beans, lentils, black beans, garbanzo beans, baked beans, potatoes, and peas. Non-starchy vegetables are lower in carbohydrates. Examples of these include celery, carrots, tomatoes, spinach, cucumbers, peppers, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, green beans, lettuce, and onions. They may require a bolus dose depending on the amount consumed. Foods containing natural sugar such as fruit, milk, and plain yogurt are sources of carbohydrate. Even though these foods contain natural sugars and are healthy foods, they will still raise your blood sugar. Added sugars contain carbohydrate. These include syrups, jellies, desserts, ice cream, candy, cakes, cookies, honey, maple syrup, agave, and sugar. Protein foods have little effect on blood sugar. They do not require bolus insulin. Examples of these are cottage cheese, eggs, string cheese, meats such as beef and chicken, and seafood such as salmon and tuna fish. Breading added to meats such as fried chicken or meatloaf may add carbohydrate and raise the blood sugar. Other examples of protein foods are pork, ham, fish, shellfish including shrimp and scallops, cheese, turkey, nuts, hot dogs, bologna, bacon, sausage, pepperoni, and salami. Note that some protein foods are high in fat and sodium and are recommended to be eaten less often for a healthy diet. Fats also have little effect on blood sugar and do not require bolus insulin. Examples of fats are oils, butter, cream, salad dressing, cream cheese, sour cream, and mayonnaise. It is important for everyone to eat a balanced diet of mostly healthy carbohydrates such as fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and low-fat milk, along with lean proteins and healthy fats. Occasional treats are acceptable. Carbohydrates are measured in units called grams. The average number of grams of a carbohydrate can range between 30 to 100 grams per meal. The amount of carbohydrate that is right for you will depend on your weight, physical activity, and stage of growth. It is important to measure food to know how much carbohydrate is in the food you are eating. Use measuring cups, measuring spoons, scoops, and scales to determine portion sizes for accurate carbohydrate counting. Accuracy with carb counting can help with blood sugar control. Food labels are the first place you look to find out the amount of carbohydrate in a food. Look at the total carbohydrate and serving size. This food has 40 grams of carbohydrate per 3 quarters cup. If you have one and a half cups, that would be two servings and equal 80 grams of carbohydrate. If an item does not have a food label, you can use resources such as Calorie King Book, Calorie King website or phone app, or My Fitness Pal phone app. These will tell you the amount of carbohydrates per serving size selected. The Upstate Joslin Food Choice List is another resource and lists serving sizes containing 15 grams of carbohydrate. Let's practice carb counting. If you were to have Cheerios, milk, and a banana for breakfast, you would add them up individually. First look at the Cheerios food label. One cup is 22 grams, and since you are having two cups, you would double that to equal 44 grams of carbohydrates from Cheerios. 
For the milk, look at the food label and you see that one cup has 12 grams of carbohydrate. Since the banana does not have a food label, you could use the Calorie King app or website and search for a medium-sized banana and find it has 27 grams of carbohydrate. Add them together to get 83 grams of carbohydrate for this meal. To figure the amount of carbohydrate in a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with milk, you would look up each item individually. A slice of bread is 15 grams of carb. Two slices would equal 30 grams of carb. Two tablespoons of peanut butter is six grams of carbohydrate. So if you are only having one tablespoon, you would, have, you would take half of that, which is three grams. A tablespoon of jelly is 13 grams of carbohydrate. A cup of milk is 12 grams of carbohydrate. Adding them all together, you have 58 grams of total carbohydrate in this meal. To figure out the amount of carbohydrate in this meal, search for chicken on Calorie King app or website and choose four ounce portion and you can see that it has no carbohydrate. Then look at the Upstate Jocelyn food choice list and you can see that one third cup of cooked rice has 15 grams of carbohydrate. And since you are having one cup, that would equal 45 grams of carbs. Next, search on Calorie King app or website for broccoli and a one cup serving is 11 grams of carbohydrate. The total for this meal will be 56 grams of carbohydrate. In order to have energy throughout the day, it is best to have three meals. They should be approximately four to five hours apart with low or no carb snacks in between if desired. Snacks are allowed. Your provider will determine the number of grams of carb you can have at a snack. Some snacks are no carb and are allowed any time. Some snacks are low carb and must be counted so you don't go higher than your snack carb goal. Higher carb snacks may be allowed as directed by your provider. These may or may not require a bolus dose of insulin. The Snack Away handout gives you ideas for low carb, no carb, and 15 gram carb snacks. Your insulin to carb ratio will tell you how much mealtime insulin to take for food. For example, a ratio of one to 15 means you will take one unit of bolus insulin for every 15 grams of carb. If you eat 60 grams of carb, you would take four units of bolus insulin for food. And if you eat 100 grams of carb, you would take six and a half units for food. The insulin to carb ratio just covers food. So if your blood sugar is high, you will need to add more insulin per your correction factor to lower blood glucose. Checking your blood, blood sugar is the best way to know if your insulin or food intake needs to be adjusted.